This is Neil Schneider for MTVS TV. Uh, I'm at AMD's offices in Markham, Ontario. To my immediate right is John Hove uh, from Imagine, program manager for Imagine. Welcome to the program, John. Thank you very much, Neil. Nice to meet you. So Imagine, actually, you've got a, a very rich history uh, behind the company in, in VR for a very long time. Can you tell us a little bit about Imagine? Imagine really started out by being an OLED component company, but we also built an HMD way back uh, probably about four or five years ago called the Z800. You may remember that from other gaming applications. So we also branched out and built HMDs for simulation within the military space for training and simulation as well as um, uh, in the field augmented reality applications. I remember the Z800 clearly because back, you know, in MTBS's roots back in 2007, the Z800 was a sample of recommended hardware in the 3D space. I mean, I think it was like 800 by 600 per eye. I don't know if you remember the specs. It was 800 by 600, yes. Okay, very good. And you had, it had tracking as well back then, yes? It did have tracking. Uh, it's one of the few. Uh, I think you and I were just discussing earlier, there's some people who actually used it for virtual tourism, which was either innovative, I think, for its time. Now, actually, before we talk about your latest work, uh, and I know we're talking about a device, I think, that originated perhaps in the late 90s. In your opinion, how far have things come? I mean, do people realize just how dramatic a change things have, have appeared so far? I was the program manager, or actually the product manager for the Z800. And when I picked up the line, it wasn't so much I think the product was a bad product. I think the product was before its time. So we're kind of at a place now, we're at the AMD's office, um, the processing power today in the PCs, in the tracking, in the graphics processor have finally caught up to what displays are capable of doing. So now I think we're at a, a kind of a, a sweet spot, if you will, in a space where processing, graphics, tracking can all come together and make virtual reality a much more robust solution than it was back in the heydays of the Z800. So we're, I mean, I'd say it started perhaps in about 2011 or so. We've seen this wonderful resurgence in, in virtual reality. Uh, what's Imagine bringing to the table? Imagine brings uh, a couple technologies. We feel, number one, that the OLED technology is a much more appropriate technology for something that's motion tracked. Um, you don't have some motion artifacts, let's say, of LCD or LCOS. There's obviously plenty of fine solutions within that space, but we obviously feel there's an advantage in the OLED. Uh, we also bring a rich partnership ecosystem in the place where we can build other graphics and tracking solutions and electronics uh, into a display solution that's uh, probably more unique in the market right now and open up that discussion. Well, okay, so, you know, one of the big innovations I've seen within the last few years is, is field of view. Actually, two innovations, field of view relatively high resolution, inexpensive. Yes. So, so what's, what's Imagine working on? We're working on field of view and uh, working on the inexpensive part, but that's, that's a tougher nut to crack right now. Um, but certainly higher resolution and field of view is, is our hate. So when we're talking about higher resolution, maybe it's time to hold up Absolutely. your prototype. What have we got on display here? So we built a HMD that has dual 2K by 2K displays. So that's uh, 2048 by 2048 pixels per eye uh, with a very thin um, optical package. So this no longer looks like a scuba mask in front of your face. Uh, it's a much more streamlined type of solution. It's a little higher there. Go ahead. Um, again, like I said, it's, a, it's a capable of going 2K by 2K per eye. Uh, which is uh, what roughly about four times the resolution of any other head-mounted display out there right now. I, I tried this out; very impressive. Like it really is very, very uh, crystal clear imagery. I, I know it's understandably a prototype, but but all the same. Now you you go beyond just the the uh, visuals here. You're actually doing some customization so that you could adjust for each eye. Yes. Yes. Uh, yes, we are. Um, two adjustments. Um, primarily is we have uh, diopter adjust because we all know not everybody is 20-20 vision. And then we also have IPD adjust uh, in the fact that uh, your inner pupil distance is not going to be the same for every person. So, okay, very good. Now, what have you been using for demo software? Like, how, how are you getting this to work? We've been using uh, a, a standard version of uh, World VR, uh, and we walk through an apartment, and uh, you know, basically you're, uh, we use a standard InnerSense uh, head track 
tracked uh, a head tracker. Mm -hmm. So you're able to look around the room, maybe able to see different products and uh, et cetera. Have you put some thought into, I, I, I think it's preliminary tracking at this point. I think of the big innovations on the optics side. Uh, are, are you putting some thought into how to properly have this head tracked? The answer is yes. We are not a tracking company. Uh, so when we started this project about um, 12 months ago, it was really had no industry standard, I guess, in, in terms of, of, of a head tracking solution. So we went with what we knew, which was an IMU, which was external, and we went with the best we have. I think for the next iteration, we'll be looking at what's available in the marketplace and marry a solution to, uh, to this HMD's next iteration to make much more robust head tracking. Now, when we're talking 2K by 2K resolution per eye, I should add, which is really something else. Normally, when we hear numbers like that, we're sometimes thinking of just, you know, that resolution spread over two eyes. Um, you know, one of the big criticisms of, of modern VR is what they call a, a screen door effect. And it's really amazing how much of that screen door effect is filled with black space versus actual lit up pixels. Can you talk a little bit as to how much black space there really is? Absolutely. Um, so it's not just a question of resolution, you know, it's a question of what we call fill factor. Um, our displays have a fill factor, which means the amount of color space to the overall, uh, the amount of lit up color space uh, compared to the overall space itself is above 80%. Um, our other HMDs in the, plant, on the world in the market today uses a cell phone screen, which looks great from arm's length, um, but their fill factor is probably less than 30%. So there's actually more black area than there are lit up area. And my analogy is going back to your sophomore biology class, first time you look through a microscope and you blow something up that large, you see things that you've never seen before. Same thing happens, I think, in, in the cell phone screens. When you blow it up to that kind of resolution, you start seeing the black space instead of seeing the lit up space. So it, it, I mean, it just boggles the mind that there's that much black space in the image. Uh, I, I know it's a bit of a screen door effect, but it's, 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 it's quite amazing that there's that much of it. Like only 20, 30% is actual pixels versus the space around those pixels. I agreed, uh, but again, understand that the, those screens were meant for something to be held at arm's length. So, um, much like, I guess, looking at a, 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 pho a photograph from across the gallery versus stepping up in the old school photographs, and now you're seeing the individual pixels or the, or the dots, it was never meant to be looked at in that type of way. Now, uh, another factor, we've been talking about resolution. What about field of view? Like how, what kind of field of view are you able to deliver with this prototype? We were able to deliver 80 degrees horizontal and vertical. So it's a circular optic, as you can see. And so we're able to see, so we can see um, 80 degrees horizontal and vertical. Um, we typically talk about field of view in the monitor space as the diagonal. But the one of the things in virtual reality, obviously, nobody wants to see the corners in the displays. Uh, everybody wants to see just the image. Uh, so a corner-to-corner -corner resolution is kind of a, a moot definition, if you will. So this is capable of 80 degrees horizontal and vertical. So when we're talking 80 degrees, you're thinking 80 degrees per eye or right across? 80 degrees per eye. So that's, uh, you're looking 160, really. Exactly. exactly. So, uh, are, you, are you having difficulty uh, driving the pixels needed to make that work? Um, th th again, you know, we're at like I'm from a performance point of view. Like, is the graphics power out there to make you know this technology work? I, I think with the high end machines, there really isn't much of an issue. Is the graphics card? Um, again, don't forget this is virtual reality. So, 2K by 2K in a virtual world means somewhere along you have to pre-render whatever's outside the peripheral vision. So now you're talking potentially an 8K by 8K type of rendering. So yeah, there is some horsepower that you need in terms of rendering. Um, but we drive it with an Alienware top, uh, uh, the laptop and you saw the demo. Yeah, very good. And what about, um, one of the challenges I've seen with uh, other HMD brands is unless they're using uh, a, low, a low persistence display, you'll get these image trails and so on. Do you, do you deal with the same types of challenges? We don't. Uh, we actually use a, a, um, a frame lock and line by line. So the persistence it happens you know, from one frame to the other. Uh, we are looking at the next iteration as prototype to drive the refresh rate much higher um, and get the persistence uh, to a to a different level. So, but we're talking to different customers now to see what that needs to be. So, uh, where are you at? Where do you want to be? 
We're at 60 hertz right now. I'd like to get to 120 uh, refresh rate, 90 at a minimum. And is, the display is capable of delivering that as it is? Is it just electronics that hold it back? Like, how, how would you describe it? I would describe it as an as, as a electronics question. Um, our display inherently is capable of going to 120 hertz. Very good. Um, one more question for you. M most of the HMDs uh, we've seen on the market, this current generation, very much geared towards consumers, mass market. They're delivering, you know, very uh, you know formidable results. How would you classify this? Is this do you do you envision this as a mass market product, or or do you do you see it as more selective? I would say that we're at a crossroads trying to make that decision right now. This is a prototype. Um, we are certainly looking to iterate the prototype, um, but we're at a kind of crossroads where we're talking to different partners about possibly productizing this thing, but no firm decision at this time that I can talk about. And, you know, back in the day, like when I'm thinking of the day, I'm thinking of the Z800, and that was how a consumer targeted product. That's what I remember it as. And it was still, you know, it was significant. It was a few hundred dollars, but you got, you know, in those days, it was, you know, you delivered. Um, nowadays, with modern HMDs, still in the hundreds of dollars, but we're, you know, obviously they're de delivering more. Um, you know, just to put this in perspective, to get something like this, if it was even possible, you'd easily be looking at tens of thousands, if not over a hundred thousand uh, dollars. Are we looking at a similar model for this, or do you think it's just going to be? When I say just, I mean, I mean like prosumer grade. Like, how how would you put it in a price bracket? I would think we would definitely be in the upper level uh, price bracket right now. Um, there is certainly a market for the consumer, the mass consumer, if you will, uh, where you're talking about millions of units per year. We're probably never going to be in that space. Uh, we're certainly going to look at, uh, like you said, the prosumer market, to, to, to borrow a phrase from HP, um, or the commercial market, uh, people who may be doing other things, uh, simulation. It, it will, we will certainly, if we do productize this thing, it will be in the thousands of units. Uh, price points certainly won't be in the hundreds of dollars. They'll probably be in the thousands of dollars. But like I said, the market segmentation will be certainly higher end for us. Okay, but uh, are you thinking tens of thousands or thousands? I can't answer that question right now. That's, um, that's questions we're trying to, uh, trying to resolve right now. Well, what I can say, based on what I've seen so far, is it is going to definitely be a formidable product. Very impressed with what I saw here today. And in life, is it's always true. You get what you pay for. And there is some, so I wish you luck with this. Thank you very much, Neil.